Hey everybody, and welcome to part 7 of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. Uh, last episode, we talked a little bit about cuts and layers, and just basic layer management, how to apply different hatches and different settings to different hatches. Uh, very, very light. If you haven't already watched that, go check that out, because you're going to need it going forward. Today, we are going to be talking about the laser tab. This is the last tiny little piece of the puzzle that we need before we actually start getting on with it you know uh but it'll be the end of like just light burn we'll actually be using the laser after this so this is kind of just like the last little thing and uh i just wanted to do a separate episode that kind of talks about how to do basic operations with your laser so that's what we're going to talk about now in order to do that you're going to need your laser turned on plugged into the computer um, we're going to get light burn up and running we're going to have the laser ready symbol on if you do not have laser ready or have missed the last episodes in the crash course and you don't know what you're doing yet i definitely recommend going back and starting at the beginning there's a link to the playlist down in the description but let's grab a square and we're just going to do a basic square here and we'll just color it black for now and last time we were in here we were adding multiple hatches different sub layers to our our black layer here we don't need these so we'll go ahead and just remove that extra layer and we'll just call this default again and speed a thousand power 80 frequency 25 should be fine i'm on a 30 watt laser you maybe don't need 80 percent power but just enough to know that we're actually marking okay with that done you know try again to just match all of these settings just for a standard test fire here i'm going to turn flood fill off too so this should be good so match that and we'll hit okay and we've got our little square. It's about 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. That sounds fine to me. And we can start actually pressing some buttons over here. We can start clicking some things. So first off, we've got three big buttons right along the top here. We've got start, stop, and pause. If we hit start, it's actually not going to start engraving right away. And that's because we told Lightburn that we wanted to pull up the frame menu before we actually started marking. If you want to disable that, all you have to do is come up to your device settings up here and down in other options, we have require framing before start. If we turn that off and hit okay and hit start again, it's gonna start marking right away. We can pause and that will stop the engraving for a moment right in place. So we can resume at any time by hitting the pause button again. And then we can hit stop, which will be a dead stop on the job, resetting us back to the beginning of the mark. So if you want to stop just temporarily to inspect and you want it to pick up where it left off, pause is going to be the way to go. If you want to cancel the operation completely and start over, the stop button is going to be the way to go. Now we turned off that option that forces us to look at the frame menu beforehand. Uh, I actually like leaving that on. I'm going to turn that back on and we're going to check out the frame menu now. So rather than hitting start, we can just hit frame and it's going to pull up the same menu. And what this menu is, is essentially our red light button from EasyCAD. So uh, whenever we hit the red or light button in EasyCAD and we're framing that piece, that's what we're doing when we're hitting frame inside of light burn. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, so I just want to walk through it really quick. We have a few different framing modes. The first one is called bounds. And what bounds is going to do is it's going to take the hard outline of whatever it is we have inside of our work area. Since we're just engraving a basic rectangle here, we're going to see the rectangle when we click bounce. Uh, but we're also going to see the rectangle when we click hull or contour because we just have one basic shape. A great thing to use to test out these different framing modes and to get an idea of what they do is to actually do a little text instead. So let's close this for a moment and that's going to turn the red light off and we can get rid of our rectangle and we'll just do a little bit of text. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Test text will do. And we'll go ahead and resize it here. And I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard to center it up in the workspace. And let's go back into the frame menu now. And we can try out a few of these other options. So with bounds, you can see that despite having text on the page, uh, we're still getting a rectangle. And that's just, again, because we're only getting the outermost rectangle shape that will encompass all of the graphics that we have in our work area. The next kind of framing mode that we have is called hull. Uh, hull is a lot like bounds, except instead of a rectangle, it's going to give us the outline point to point. 
So you can see we're still kind of in that one bulk outline type of shape, but instead of a rectangle, it's giving us a little more of a conforming shape. So it gives you a little bit of a better idea as to where exactly your mark is going to land. A lot of times hull mode is a great compromise between the fast and easy to see bounding box and the slow and more difficult to see contour. So let's take a look at contour. Contour is actually going to give us an outline of the individual shapes. So we can see all of the shape paths that all of the objects on screen are comprised of. Contour is great when you need to know exactly what is going exactly where. It's easy enough to use with small bits of text like this, but when you have big complicated graphics on the screen, it can be a little more difficult to trace that red laser with your eyes. It's fast, but it's just not fast enough to do really, really complicated stuff and, and actually be able to get any usable information out of it. And that's where hull can really come in handy. So we're back in hull mode and while we get a decent amount of information from this it, we can't really tell where the individual letters are going to fall. There are more options that we can use that will give us a little bit more information without using all of our red light time to outline every single curve of the text and the number one way to do that is with this pillbox up here that says frame individually. If we check that box we're still going to get our hull but now our hull is encompassing each individual letter. So hopefully the difference there makes sense. Individual hulls trace faster than individual contours. So by using the frame individually selector, we can get that hull outline that gives us a good idea of where our text is gonna go without drawing out every single curve. On really complicated graphics, this can make it much easier to be able to get placement down. There are a couple other things about framing that I wanna show you before we move on. But if we go back to contour and we have our text here, we can see both the outside and the inside of every letter. Again, we're trying to shave down the amount of time that we're taking to frame things so that we can use that red laser time to visualize more objects in our workspace. A neat trick that you can do with Lightburn is you can actually get rid of the inside of the letters, but still see the individual letters. Watch the inside of the E's when we change this next setting. We're gonna come up here to where it says outside shapes only, and we're gonna check that. And let's go back and look at our red light again. Now you can see that we can still see the individual letters, but the inside of the E's are not being drawn. This outside shapes only option is a great way to get the contour light so that you can see exactly where everything is going, but still do it in an efficient way. Outside shapes only is great for both text and complex vectors. For the last demo for framing, we're going to pull the text down a little bit. We're going to grab our rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a rectangle real quick. And let's make sure that our rectangle is set to a tool. So our test is set to the black layer and our rectangle is set to the tool layer. If we frame this now in contour mode, we can see that we're getting the frame of the contour of the text and we're getting the frame of the tool. We do have this option up here that says tool layers only. If we select that, all of a sudden we're not going to be red lighting the text anymore. This is just going to show us where our tool outlines are. This feature is really handy if you have things spread out over a certain area. Maybe you're using the toolboxes to outline jig areas and you only want to red light those specific areas of the jig. One click and we can turn tool layers only off and we'll get our text back. Another handy tool that they've built into Lightburn is, uh, first of all, Lightburn will not mark white pixels. Uh, EasyCAD has notoriously always marked white pixels and you have to go deep into the settings in order to set it to ignore white pixels. Lightburn is essentially going to treat this image as transparent. Now, when we have this image bounds option up here turned off and we're framing, we're going to get the rectangle framed. So any part of this raster image within this rectangle, we're just gonna see a rectangle. But we can turn image bounds on and what that's going to do is it's gonna recognize the this pixel border and it's actually going to show us the outline of the actual contents of the photo ignoring any white pixels which is incredible uh, it's very 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 useful so if you're marking a lot of raster images the image bounds option is going to be key for you also while we're inside the framing menu you can see we have full control over our laser operations so we can still start and pause and resume and stop our job this is also where we're going to find our job repeat functionality. 
If you were watching a few episodes ago, we discussed how to repeat an entire sequence of layers uh, by setting this number and checking the repeat box. So if we check the repeat box and we set this value to 10, it's going to repeat everything in the cuts and layers panel in order 10 times. We can also choose to run the job continuously, and this will just run everything in the layers panel over and over and over until we intervene and stop the project from running. So if you're looking for how to actually come in and repeat full layer sets, that functionality is hiding inside the frame menu. One last thing I want to show you guys before we end this episode. Uh, let's get rid of that tool and we'll just center our text back up here. So if I turn off require framing before start and hit OK and we start the job, it's going to go ahead and run the job for us. And when it's done, the red light's going to go away and nothing else is going to happen. If we have a lot of these jobs that we need to run over and over and over again, and we're going to be lining it up in the same place over and over again, uh, one handy thing that you can do is actually launch the engraving from the frame menu. If we open the frame menu before starting the job and then we let the job run through, you'll notice that when the job is complete, it will actually start reframing for us again automatically. So we can do a whole series of the same part over and over. If using the red light is enough to get them lined up uh, quickly and efficiently, we can just keep running parts from the frame menu and it'll keep relighting for us one after the next. And that is it, guys. That's the end of this episode of the Lightburn Crash Course. Next episode, we are going to be talking about how to find the focal distance of your laser so that we can move on to some of the more complicated topics as far as getting your machine set up and dialed in so that it's running at 100%. So this is where things are really going to start to get interesting now. Buckle up, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we add an episode to the Crash Course. If you need help with anything at all, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Discord and Facebook group down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. We absolutely love what we do here, guys, teaching you how to use your laser engraving machines, and we want to keep doing that. Every episode that we upload to the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to sign up to support the channel, you can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. It starts at eight bucks a month. It comes with a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up and it's an awesome community over there. So I hope to see you over there soon. That's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.